Hey, what do you figure, diggers? So, I'm a little bored, so I thought I'd take the time to show you guys my homemade blast furnace. Cost me 20 bucks to make it. And I've used it to melt gold, silver, uh, copper. This little gaffer just heats right the hell up. Awesome little furnace. So, I got myself a paint can. I went to uh, Sherwin Williams, and I got myself a, a mist tint. Pardon me. Oh, and I got myself a mist tin can. The uh, meaning that the they made a mistake as they made the gallon of paint. They made it the wrong color, or it wasn't the right color, or it wasn't just as the customer wanted. So they mark it as a mist tint, put a little color on top, throw it to the back pile. You can go in and buy mist tints at about five dollars a gallon, just so they can get rid of them. Good thing to know. Go to paint stores and ask for the mist tints, and you can choose your colors of. Dirt cheap paint. Sure, Williams, Color Your World, Bear, Glidden, ICI, they all do it. Alrighty, so, or you can just buy an empty can, $3.50 for an empty can. I needed the paint. So what I did was, I went out and bought myself some Plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris. I cut the paint can, just below the ears, all the way around. I left the lid on it when I did that, to make it easier to put in the base, or the top rather. And, once it was all dried and cured, as you can see, once it was all dried and cured, I drilled two holes through it. And I gouged that out a little bit. There's the two holes. Alright. There's the foundry, or the blast furnace. Uh, probably in depth, five inches, maybe, six inches. Full depth. Yeah, five, six inches. So, what I did was I poured the base first, meaning I uh, left the can, of course, as it was, and I poured in about two inches and made sure the can was perfectly level. And I allowed that to cure. That gave me a two inch base underneath between the bottom of the can and the sidewalls. Then I went out and got myself a chunk of cardboard, I taped it to a cylinder to the size that I wanted. After the base had cured, I inserted it to as much of what I could figure was the center of the can. Just eyeballed it. And uh, I lambasted that thing with uh, Vaseline so that when it did cure, it would just come right back out easily. And then, once it was secured, set in, should I say secured, I put it in and held it there with my hand, dead center, and I mixed up enough, probably, well, it took me two containers, two one-liter containers of plaster of Paris to do it entirely which was the about ten dollars and I held it in place after having my plaster of Paris mixed up and poured it in around the edges now once it's in you don't have to worry about holding down the paper anymore because it'll hold itself just by the weight of the plaster of Paris uh, encompassing it once that's cured not all the way cured just hard enough that it won't fall in on itself five minutes you can uh, just slide out the piece of cardboard with the Vaseline on it and allow it to cure the rest of the way uh, I suggest you let it cure for about a week, maybe two, unless you so choose. You can put it into your oven and bake it at about 350 or 500 for a good three hours, four hours. And then still after that, let it set. So when I got all that done, and all the plaster of Paris had hardened and solidified, I went over here to the side, as you can see, right in there, took my little Dremel, about a half an inch, Sorry, one inch I did from the bottom. So it would be pretty much center. And I used my Dremel to cut a little square. And then I drilled through the plaster of Paris on an angle. On an angle meaning it went in probably on about maybe uh, 15 degrees. So that when it comes into the blast furnace, so when it's inside, it shoots around. You want it to circulate within. So the fire should be coming in and around circulating. Now you're wondering how in the heck is he heating this? I use propane and if I need more heat I'll use MAP. I have a little canister <clears throat> which will sit right here sit right down on here. The nozzle turns and fits perfectly inside of there. It heats up the foundry, blast furnace and uh, whatever's inside. Usually my crucible full of gold or silver. And then from there you wait about five minutes and it's completely melted, completely liquefied. You wait 10 minutes with the flux on top, and it's cleaning. 
purifying your metal. So, without any further ado, what do you say we fire this little bad boy up and see how she runs? Alrighty. As I was saying, here's my propane canister. Just a canister of propane. Now this nozzle is one that came with my map gas canister. It's uh, rotatable. You can move it, which is really cool. And it's got its own little igniter. So what I do is, I'll put it on this angle, turn it to this side, right? so it's pointing off to the left, and I just slide the nozzle in, get in. Get in. See there? You just see it. Pull it back to where you just can't see it. Turn on the gas. And away she goes. Crank it up, turn it down, wherever you so need. Okay. I'll turn it off for now. <clears throat> I'll load it up with my gold in my crucible, and we'll melt some gold. Let's make a little gold, uh, what would you call it, button. That's the word, a gold button. One second. Okay, so there's my gold stock. You guys remember I found that ring last summer? With the, it was called a caged floating pearl. Had a little pearl inside with the cage. Well, as you can see, my wife was wearing it one day, and accidentally it broke. So... No pearl, and I'm not going to pay to have it repaired, so I don't have to worry about paying extra. I just want to keep the value that's already in it. I'm going to turn it in and melt it with my two existing ingots. One is 14.8 grams. The second is 8.85 grams. 8.85. Okay, so I'll put them in the crucible, all three. And I'll drop them down in here, inside of my little blast furnace. Pretty much centered. See it there? I'll crank up the gas. Fire up the foundry. And we'll put the lid on top. And wait. Soon enough, it'll be so red in there, it'll be lit up like a Christmas tree. And I'll get back to you when she's warmed up. Starting to get red. Starting to glow. And as you can see, this here, my pipe, you can see the smoke coming out of it and everything else. But, it's been running for about a minute and a half now. This pipe never gets hot. It doesn't get hot, right to the side of the can. I can grab it with my hands. And I'll show you again while it's running and the gold is still melting inside. Well, it's still a... I mean, look inside there. Red hot. And yet I can still hold this pipe with my hand. No worry about this getting too hot or any uh, concern for the canister. It just works perfectly. As you can see, I'm still holding it. See? It doesn't get hot. Awesome. Love this little foundry. Blast furnace. Sorry, I keep calling it a foundry. And as you can see... There's the crucible, getting red. Let's lift the lid off quickly, just to give you a glimpse. See her down in there? Cool. Put the lid back on. Okay, one sec. Alright. See the gold down in there? Getting red. Nice and red hot. She'll be melting soon. Coming together. And as I said, propane. You don't have to use the oxycetylene or anything like that. Just put her in a little enclosed chamber. Put in your gold. Let her go. See the ingot with the ring leaning up against it down there? See how hot that ring is? It's almost white hot already. Cherry, about ready to go to liquid. Once it's going to liquid, we'll let it sit in there and burn a little bit with the flux. And you'll see, she'll all come together with a nice big button. Gathering it. Once it liquefies, I'll 
lift the lid off and show you again as it's sitting in there. That's the buttons. Turning. It actually turns. It'll roll and roll and roll and move itself around. All right, one second. And there we go. Liquefaction. One big congealed ball. Still running the propane. She got nice and hot. Made me a gorgeous ingot. Very cool, as you can see. Gold! There's my blast furnace foundry. Awesome. And there we go. One gold ingot. Let her cool. Should have had a bucket of water, but nonetheless, all melted. There's my ingot. <coughs> Foundry's still red hot. Now I'll take this out. As you can see, still hold the handle. Uh, back her off. Still perfectly holdable. You know what I mean? That thing is red hot, but I can hold this thing no problem. Doesn't get hot to the touch at all. <laughs> Very cool. Well, hey guys, there it is in all its glory. Got all the flux cleaned off of it. Very cool. Let's get a wait. Twenty four point seven four grams of a minimum eighteen K for lying at the roll around in the flux it cleaned it up to a minimum of eighteen K. So I haven't done a gold test yet, but I will. And I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Best wishes, good luck and happy hunting. And if you're like me, stuck in the frostbitten snow, stay warm, play safe. <laughs>